We're really excited because it's a real honor uh, to introduce our next guest, very talented singer, songwriter, actress, musician, and uh, producer. And she has worked with some of the greats in the business, such as uh, Stevie Wonder, Prince, and uh, Lenny Kravitz, and Michael Jackson, Patti LaBelle. But most importantly, she is an independent artist and has a brand new CD, which is entitled Light a Day. And uh, she is kind enough to spend some time with us this afternoon out I believe she's out in California right now. We welcome to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF, Marva King. So how you doing, Marva? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, th- thanks for the music, I got to say. You know, always a pleasure to ha- have your great voice on, on music and bring it to our listeners. So thanks so much. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So, so how long uh, have you been uh, putting together the album and writing songs? And, you know, it seems like a big project and, and just... Great to have it here. How, how long has it been uh, in production? Well, yeah, you know what? I actually physically sat down and put my head to this. I would say it started back in September of last year. Okay. Started in September. Um, some of the songs were actually written a year, two years, some of them even three years before we actually went back in with them. I re recorded them. Uh, but. To start from start to finish, uh, from September until the last week of December right. <laughs> of last year, yeah. So I worked on it then. I mean, diligently, and it was a lot of work because that's the first project that I've did all the writing and production and everything, the mixing and mastering. I was like, oh my god, I learned a lot, and uh, actually even assembling the uh, outer cover and all that. So. Want to run a company? There you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and as I just uh, phoned up Marva, she was, she was conducting business as, as we spoke, so that that's great. And <laughs> you know, you definitely have to support uh, independent music. And uh, we told our listeners they can do their homework and especially order the CD at uh, thekittysings.com dot com and also cdbaby.com dot com. And uh, you yeah. know, the CD is available. You. Yeah. Thanks for the calendar. Outstanding, beautiful <laughs> pictures and. You know our listeners will definitely wanted to pick that up uh, as thank well. You so so. Much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was fun. That was a serious process as well. During the interim of uh, recording the album, I did the photo shoot for the calendar too. And uh, interesting, you know, especially wearing bathing gear in the wintertime here. It wasn't too, <laughs> it wasn't right. too much fun on the beach. <laughs> That's on California, right? Oh yeah, yeah, but it's just right. A little chilly out here in the wintertime. time. Yeah, it had to bring the Afro picture back as well, so that's cool. <laughs> With Biggie and and Tupac's uh, oh yeah picture there, yeah. So, you know, let me ask you: You've been working. You have a, your own home studio for the album, or you work at different studios? You know what? I worked in there's a studio. Um, it's called. Well, we have named it Toll House because okay. my engineer's last name is Tolbert, ah, and. I there is another building outside, separate from his home, that he turned into a studio maybe about eight years ago. Really nice, state-of-the-art studio. It's a private studio, though. And um, that's where I do most of my recording because it's an environment that I'm very, very comfortable. Now, I've done a lot of pre-production in my own space, you know, uh, but to dump tracks and all that and get it all to the... Uh, computer i go to his location and i do it like that and we just work really really well together we've known each other for a while we met each other as songwriters on another big artist project um gosh nine years ago so uh, we've been in his studio actually for about seven and a half years eight years you know developing and i start learning to really become the producer (laughs) um yeah so he he allows the freedom you know it's no gender issue or anything like that. Um, not so much of a time issue as well. So I can go in there and just kind of let my hair down and just do my thing in there. So, um, you know, that's what we're coming in. And right now I'm actually developing some other tracks for soundtracks and uh, getting prepared for the next album, you know, mm-hmm. the end of next year that will come out. So Always um, working. Oh, yeah, always working, right. definitely. You know, this is a full-time job when I say full-time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, and a credit to yourself, i, I got to give you for, for obviously the writing and, and your vocals, but uh, the diversity of the sounds on it. And I was going to I was gonna ask you, um, you know, some of the tracks are, are like the modern-day recording. I, I take it with uh, 
and then the other ones, you, you got some great live band feels in there. How, oh, how, yeah. how is it working the two and, and blending it into a project? Well, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I did go in the Bay Area. I have to mention that. There's a studio. It's famous. And um, it is a place that is, it's called Fantasy Studio. It's a place where everybody from, I don't even know how far back, but I mean, they start telling me about artists from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Almost everybody went there in Berkeley in the Bay Area. And uh, I went up there to record a band in that area called Heat. Okay. They are really, really hot. So I did two live tracks, If You Want Me to Stay, and a song called Trippin' that I wrote. And uh, that was fun. That was more than fun. I got a lot of live footage on that, too. Um, but we went in, basically, they did two takes on one song, maybe four takes on the other because it had a lot of horns and stuff like that in there. So uh, that was an incredible experience. So it was a break from doing everything by MPC and Pro Tools, you know, which you stay in there. And basically it's myself and my engineer that are just in the room. But it was like the whole group, and it felt like being at a concert with just no big audience, you know. Right, right. So that was fun, and just seeing how they did it old school. But they started naming people like Earth, Wind & Fire, Santana, Ike and Tina Turner. I mean, it's just like the list just goes on and on and on and on. All these serious funksters and R&B, you know, celebrities that we've been knowing about for many, many years. And uh, so it was a pleasure being in the studio there. And the engineer that worked with me, a guy by the name of John, I forget his last name, he would probably kill me. Okay. But uh, yeah. John has been there since the 80s. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, he was there since the 80s. He didn't look like it. I said, you don't look like you're old enough to <laughs> be there. But, you know, he said, music keeps you young. But he started telling me all kinds of stories. So it was great to be in the same room with some of these, you know, legends and uh, recording my thing here in the 2000 era. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't mind working in Pro Tools, all that. I don't mind doing it because I move pretty fast in the studio. And my engineer, like I said, we know each other. It's like we become one in that room. I can say, do this, punch in that. You know, he has the technical part of it that makes my life real easy. We can do so many things with technology now. And uh, so it's cool, you know, it's very, and he's also a musician, so if there's some lines that's a little bit complicated and I just can't seem to get them down fast enough, he's just still right on in, so that's fun. But I really like doing the live thing. I mean, that's what I really, truly, truly love. And you definitely can sing, so, uh, you know, I, I've seen you. Marva perform several times, and, uh, <laughs> you know, you got to pick up the album, thekittysings.com, Light of Day is the CD. We, you know, we we got to get into some music and let our listeners uh, listen to Marva King's new CD. And uh, we'll go with the track called Bounce. And uh, any cool. particular reason to, to have it the lead-off track to the record? Yes, uh -huh. because I know it's a hot track. And yeah. uh, it's, it's for the ladies. It's the ladies' bounce. The ladies have, <laughs> have ghetto booty beautiful bounce. bodies, ghetto booty bounce, and, you know, whatever else. You know, even if you just want to bob your head and bounce that, too. But, yeah, ladies, you know, it's, it's a lady song. But the guys love the beat. And uh, as a matter of fact... Um, that's the song right now that's circulating around the U.S. I'm picking up stations as of last week, and that's the one that everybody's picking. So I think I was on the mark there. All right. <laughs> great, great yeah. choice there, and we'll listen to it right Thank now. You. This is from Marva King, and it's called Bounce, right here on WVOF in the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. And we wanted to say hello to uh, one of our listeners, Gamia, who's listening up in Montreal and instant message us and let us know he's digging the Marva King interview live right here and she's out in california and welcome back that's bounce yeah Yay. thanks marva <laughs> thank you and thanks for calling in too gamia yeah gamia he, he's uh one of our listeners in music review up in montreal so he's digging oh, cool. it instant message us so you know cool. you know i was going to uh let our listeners know uh we got some great artists that have come out of uh, flint michigan where you hail from uh, ready from the world was out there as well right Exactly, yeah. yeah. They came out in the 80s. Right. Yeah, so, they so, were a hot group. <laughs> so so you grew up in uh, Flint, Michigan. I know your parents were very influential and, and you getting into music. Talk talk a bit about growing up in the Midwest and, and getting into music and taking us to uh, where you are now. Right. Well, of course, both my parents, mom and dad, were singers, songwriters. They did gospel music. My mom is also a musician, uh, pianist. And uh, so from the 
ripe age of six and seven, she had me around the piano already starting to groom me uh, to be a singer and uh, just trying to prepare me for the stage, which still took several years. I was way too shy for that, but I did it anyway because uh, that's what she said is going to happen. So they, they did a lot of training with me. Now, my dad ended up breaking off into secular music as well by the time I was about eight years old. So he would kind of let me listen to secular, and I got to know about all the artists then, you know, the Jacksons and Shaka Khan, and, I mean, I could just go on and on with Earth, Wind & Fire, all the people that influenced me, and uh, Minnie Ripperton, and uh, so it was really good and refreshing for him to allow me to basically listen to that kind of music. My mom was more of the serious gospel buff, so she she just she didn't really get into that too much at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, so, so what's but, the punishment for uh, listening to secular music when you're not allowed to? Well, it wasn't. She didn't mind me listening to it. Uh-huh. She, she just never purchased the records, and at oh, that okay. age, I didn't have the money to do it. Right, right. <laughs> she didn't purchase any of that. I could go to my neighbor's house. That's what I did. I would go to my neighbor's house and listen to it, and you know, and then I, we would turn it on on the radio sometimes. But for the most part, no. It was gospel being played in our house. The Shirley Caesar. Five, five Blind Boys from Alabama, Andre Crouch, I mean, the list goes on and on of the people that, you know, I was influenced by in the gospel still. But, um, you know, they definitely groomed me and encouraged me, especially my mom. Um, I sang with a lot of different choirs in school and churches, singing groups that she had. You know, I traveled with her quite a bit. They had a group called Wings of Faith, and they opened up for a lot of people like James Cleveland and Shirley Caesar and uh, Mighty Clouds of Joy, you know, people like that, all the gospel listeners, you know, that know of those names from back in that day. Um, so I got a chance to experience a lot with her and just watch her and see how she would direct, because she was always the leader, and I watched how she direct her group or her choirs and, you know, just kind of accepted her musicianship and just not look at it as something that was a difficult feat. Um so it was good. It was very, very good being around that, and I learned to appreciate so many, many styles of music being in the Midwest because it's a melting pot, and uh, you know, you heard everything from R and B. I heard a lot of pop music. Like my younger brother, you would never people say, "Oh, he couldn't have grown up with you guys." Uh-huh. He is so pop. I mean, singing "Bye Bye in the American Bye," oh, she shabby to the left, and right. like that, <laughs> <laughs> and they go, "Okay." But as quiet as it was kept, right, right. appreciated that too. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and listen to the carpenters and people like that, you know, who had something totally different to offer than the R and B music that we were very, very familiar with, you know, and gospel music. So, um that's why you hear so many different diverse styles on my record. I'm not even doing half of what I know to do and what I appreciate right. in terms of styles of music. So, you know, you can only put so much stuff on a space, so um, as as more projects come, I'll have more music and yeah. more different styles, international as well as uh, you know national music. So no, yeah, no, my, no shortage for the next next record, right? You, I mean, you talked about no that. shortage, right. <laughs> no shortage. No creativity flows through my veins, and uh, so I'm always writing. I'm always thinking things. I'm always dreaming. You know, different songs, melodies pop in my head, and then I document them. So. You know, I'm always a step ahead in terms of that. You know, I think it never goes anywhere because it's such a part of me. And um, I look forward to doing the next project. But this one here, you know, I really enjoy recording. Um, I just kind of reached back and grabbed some of the old school funk as well as uh, what's called neo-soul now, you know. But it's still, I call it R&B music. Yeah, right. But it's just with an extra little flavor, you know, more of the hip-hop beats to it. Um and then the hip-hop, and then some of the jazz influence, because I've done duets with people like Will Downing. Um, I've been featured on quite a few jazz projects that have done very, very well around the world. And um, so I kind of put a little bit of that influence in there as well. So the only thing I didn't put a lot of was rock. <laughs> Being with uh, my ex-boss, my last boss, mm-hmm. um, I got experience, you know, exposed and uh, had a lot of experience with rock music. So that's another area that I would love to tap into on my next project. So, so uh, my special guest right now, if you just tuned in, listen, uh, Marva King, and uh, we'll be uh, playing some more music from the CD Light of Day. Her website, thekittysings.com, and 
Uh, also, cdbaby.com, you can purchase the record there. And uh, if you yeah. missed out the beginning of the interview, we'll be airing this interview in its entirety uh, in a couple of weeks, three to four nights at Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com. And, uh, you know, you talked about getting the courage to, to sing finally and uh, getting out there. And then then you've worked. I mean, we only touched on a few people you've collaborated with and toured with, but uh Working with uh, the luminaries like Stevie Wonder, who was the first person I ever saw in concert, and uh, mm. you know Patti LaBelle, Michael Jackson, and Prince. Uh, right. How do how did you first get into that 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 working uh, group right there? All those folks. <laughs> well, you know what? My first job. I came here as a teen. Um, I finished high school a year early, and I just I was anxious <laughs> uh-huh. to get out here. So I came out here with no family or friends, and. Um, kind of beat the pavement for a while and enrolled in school uh, in a junior college out here. And I end up getting very fortunate where someone introduced me to Stevie Wonder. And I got hired basically on the spot. So wow. it started with him. Yeah, that was amazing. So, so what, <laughs> kind of a, what kind of audition is that? Or, you, you know, Stevie just hears some well, tracks you're recording? He had um, a rehearsal okay. with his group, with his band Wonderlove. And I was just told to show up at the rehearsal facility, and I went, and he sat at the piano and said, okay, what do you know? And I gave him a couple songs, and (laughs) I sang them, and that was pretty much it, I guess. He actually tested me to see, you know, if I could harmonize with songs that he could just take think of right off the top of his head just to see if he you know if i was quick or how my pitch was and all that if it was something that was unrehearsed how fast i could respond and so it went very well and i didn't know if he never hires anybody on the spot so i felt really honored that he did but it was fate it meant to you know it was meant to be we mm-hmm. became really good friends um He's told me a lot and taught me a lot about the business. And, you know, I know a lot about his days as a kid, you know, being little Stevie Wonder, being in the industry. So it was a real good experience, Um, (laughs) which brings me to how I ended up getting with Prince. I performed at Stevie's birthday party uh, in 97. Okay. And uh, (laughs) Prince said, well, I hired you because he said there were like nine singers up on the stage, you know, during this party. We were just all having a good time. And he said he called you up out of the nine and said, let's make up something on the stage, which he had kind of a habit of doing, and everybody would always freeze. I I did it as well, but I knew he was going to call me out, and he did. And he said I was impressed with the fact that he called you out of all those singers. There were some great singers up there. And this was out in L.A.? This was in L.A. Okay. Yeah, this was in L.A. at Stevie's party, so... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's how it all started with Steve. Now, with Patty, I did um, some television shows with her. I did some recordings with her. Um, trying to think who else she just mentioned. I work with so right, many people. Right. Um, so I, I know with Prince, I, I saw an interview you did uh, back on BET, and you mentioned that Prince says in the recording he had, he had some stuff planned for you. and uh, Oh, yeah. He wouldn't tell you at first what what it was, but eventually went on to to do some touring and how did you just do uh one or two tours with him you know what we did i don't know if you can call it one or two uh i did the jam of the year tour right right but it went on for a couple years we did this for a couple years and um that was a lot of touring i did a lot of touring with him (laughs) it lasted a long time it was great um, but I had never worked that hard ever on the road. I had never did that much traveling at one, you know, at one time. Is there um, a lot of rehearsals for his tour oh, back yeah. then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still legendary. Yeah. That's why he's as great as he is. That's right. why all the musicians he have are as great as they are, because trust you me, he, I learned from him. You have to rehearse it until, you know, you're almost ready to regurgit. it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and then when you get out there, it's automatic. You can do it in your sleep. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's why he has such incredible shows. He rehearses constantly. I mean, he lives music. I mean, he wakes up he, and he goes to bed with it. So, of course, we had to do that as well. So... And you did some recording, too, on the New Power Soul as well. Oh, yeah, I did some on New Power Soul, and we started a couple albums (laughs) for myself. Yeah, one was very rock-influenced. We didn't complete it. We started, we we kept starting and stopping because we were on the road so much. Right. And uh, then he also did another project. I guess you can say it was like R&B, 
mm-hmm. with rock, with some rock flavor to it as well. Um, and then I decided to kind of, you know, go out on my own. And it's it's amazing how it all worked out, which is a story in itself. And um, his words to me, because he knew I was going to do that. And he gave me his blessings and said, you know, I know you got to do what you have to do. And um, it was it was a great it was a great parting actually. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So one of these days, I guess um, we're gonna meet up again, where hopefully I'll be opening for him. Yeah. <laughs> we can just do our thing and reminisce and do some of the other songs. That's too. right. If the time can open up now, and you know, people have been collaborating with him in years past. You know, it seems like it's, you know, it's it's family forever. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah so definitely. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw him here a few months ago here in L.A. But uh, yeah, so that's that's how that's going. So and we uh, should, oh, sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I, I I wanted to get into another track off the record. Okay. And uh, come back and speak a little more. Uh, Very with good. Marva King, who's uh, kind enough to join us uh, during a busy day. She's an independent artist, and <laughs> we we definitely support independent music here and her website thekittysings.com and this is from Light of Day. We'll slow things down right now. This is called No Fantasy and uh, we'll come back and speak more with Marva King. And that's another great song, Change and Slow Down right there with uh, No Fantasy from Marva King CD Light of Day. I know it's uh, early in the afternoon out there and uh, but our listeners, you know, that's a great for the late night moments, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. No fantasy. Right. <laughs> so yeah. so take us in. Uh, what, you know the kitty sings. Uh, obviously has a, a big meaning for your. You know to have your website. What, what was uh, <laughs> the meaning behind that? Uh, that's funny. Someone asked me that yesterday. Um, <laughs> they said, "What made you name it the Kitty Sings?" And they they laughed. They were just in hysterics. And I said, "What's so funny?" Uh-huh. <laughs> and they said, "The fact." The kitty. Well, okay. Let's 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 say the real is. I have a cat, and I love this cat. I mean, she's like a child. She's very, very smart. She's been around me for eight years now, and I don't know. A song just popped in my head uh-huh. <laughs> called the kitty song, which is it ended up being titled. But I just started hearing this, and I'm like, what the heck? And uh-huh. I kept going because I said, this is funny. I said, I can't sing about the kitty. I said, people are going to take it in a different way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, I ended up recording this song called The Kitty Song, and I have about seven versions from house music to funk to rock. I have one version, and everybody swore. They said, Prince had to help you write this. And I said, no, he didn't. I said, but we both are from the Midwest. It's a Midwestern influence. So, um, and yeah, I even have a R and b like a hip-hop kind of version to it. I have so many versions of this song, and I thought it was so clever. Now, sure, I'm talking about my cat, but I'm also talking about female anatomy as well. Right. <laughs> if I could say this. Oh, that's radio, all right. But, okay, but... And I found when I recorded it, I said, I don't know if ladies are going to accept this too much. I said, the guys are probably going to like it because it's a clever song. It's not vulgar at all. I don't know if you had a chance to listen yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I have. But, <laughs> but what I found is the most conservative women said, I love that song. I knew I was on to something. Uh, yeah, now, right. of course, I took it in the clubs, of course, and the ladies, all the girls would say, is that your record? They said, oh, I love that record. It's a sense of empowerment. It's like the females who let the dogs out, you know? Right. And uh, so all the women go, yeah, yeah, I love that song. And then the guys like it because they said that's sensual, just the fact that you even talk about Kitty. But in all honesty, it started with my cat. And uh, so she gets mad props around here. She wears a crown now and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty King, right? Yeah, that's this right. Marva King's little protege. But um, so I, I end up naming the uh, website thekittysings.com. I, um, I've i had a website before, Marva King, you know, of course, but I just thought that was clever, uh, the kitty sings, and uh, because I'm calling myself actually a feline, and I sing. So that's, right. that's all, that's all, you know, that's, you know, nothing real profound behind it, but, you know, that's, I thought it was clever, it was different, and the name was available. <laughs> hey, that, that, that's a great <laughs> explanation for it. So, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about all the hard work uh, as an artist, uh, getting the word out and getting things lined up to to mm-hmm. make it known that you have a great album out. T- take us into uh, s- some days uh, as an independent artist, and what what do you go behind the scenes to let people know about your record? 
What I do behind the scenes, oh boy. Well, besides setting up um, accounts with companies, internet companies like CD Baby, who have been very, very wonderful for me. I have to yeah, that's give them a I shout hear. out. Yeah, right. Oh, they've been great, man. I mean, they put my bio information up. They they refer people to my site directly, which most of the companies do not do. Um, if they run out of CDs, my sales, they'll refer people right to my account so I get the sales direct. I never miss any of them. Um, it's just it's a very good promotional vehicle. Obviously, they have a huge, huge amount of consumers that listen to them from all over or look at their site from all over the world. I know my manager's calling like over and over here. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> but um, I like, you know, the demographics. It's, it's just set up great. Um, so I, I have to answer all the fan. I do. I answer all the yeah. fan mail, yeah. make sure that everybody get what they need. They get their free gift, as I promised them, you know, because I have posters and things like that that I give. I have Marvin King T-shirts. Um, I do everything from <laughs> – I won't say I'm a one-woman operation. I think no man is an island and nobody functions by themselves. But I have people that work under me. But in terms of the brain of the operation, I have to sit up daily and say, okay, what marketing tools or vehicles can I come up with or let me follow up on some things that have already gotten in motion. Um, I do interviews like I'm doing now daily, uh, radio, television, uh, just whatever, club interviews. I've been out doing some promotional touring um, in the Midwest. I'm mean, sorry, uh, the East Coast and in the West Coast. I've been doing promotional touring. I actually went to Mexico, uh, Cabo San Lucas, and did a show with Tommy Lee there. So everywhere I go, you know, I, I sell merchandise. I do the whole independent, you know, the routes that everybody go. I perform. I do my merchandise, and I sign fan uh, posters or just whatever. If they purchase, you know, I do that kind of stuff on a daily or weekly basis, I should say. I don't do that daily. Um, I'm on the phones. I'm talking to distributors. I'm talking to record companies. I'm talking to radio stations. I mean, anything that's involved in the daily operation of running a label, I do that plus be the artist. And I also uh, connect some artists with labels. I connect artists with producers for uh, audio, I connect them with producers and directors for video, so I kind of have another business on the side that I, I do as well, um, just to keep people well connected, and, you know, it's it's monetarily lucrative, you know, somewhat, right. um, helps to keep me going and uh, make my life a little pleasant, but um, that's what I do daily. Yeah. Um, it, it's a full-time job, and, and I'm Anybody that can hear and to send me the fan mail and, um, you know, the email saying, I really appreciate you or I know you from this or from that, I appreciate it all. I, I love it because, you know, I know that I am affecting someone and um, they care enough to the point to where they send me a letter just to let me know that I always appreciate that. So that's why I make sure I answer them or send them photographs as they request or just something, you know, just a hello. Um so that's what I do. I mean, that's what I do, and uh, there's a lot of a lot of good advice for for musicians out there. Which what you say, you got to work. That's it. Besides having all yeah. the great talent, <laughs> yeah. Now you got to do a lot of work, especially when you take the route that I've taken. Because from everything, from you know, I was like, gosh, I got to find a shrink wrapping company uh -huh. for the CD. Oh boy, okay. Oh, I got to be concerned about really what kind of jewel cases I get. Oh boy, I didn't know that. Right. Oh, and um, you know, writing up the lyrics. That, you know, I wanted a booklet, and they said, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to hire a company to do it, or are you going to do it? Well, we end up doing it. Boy, that took weeks. <laughs> that took weeks. Uh, the photography, I mean, just everything. It's a lot of work into that. And spining, you know, spine, uh, what am I saying, the, the spine of the CD. Right. You have to put the uh, barcode information. You have to spine it where you can put it in the store so that people can see it immediately. And just all these things that I had no idea that I had to be responsible for. I was like, whoa, okay. Well, you said you want to have an independent company, and here you are. So all of it now has been a great experience. I can show anybody how to do it now. Um, and I'm glad I did it because whether I do it again myself independently or not, I do know. I know, and so I can function as a CEO and be very knowledgeable about whatever anybody would come to me in terms of uh, – 
you know, the operation and saying, uh, well, we need to do this or how that, or I'm doing this and I can know for sure if it's being done correct or if it's done incorrect or (laughs) that's, that's a good thing. Knowledge is very valuable. Yeah. Great and valuable. And, you know, I, I I spoke with you last Monday and, you know, I came home and, you know, the calendar was waiting. I forgot to mention it. It was your birthday last Monday, right? Yes, so happy was. birthday. A week Thank late. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I had a ball. And trust you me, I've been getting happy birthday wishes every day since the Friday before my birthday. And I was taken out for four nights in a row. So like I said on the calendar, my best birthday ever. And it has been. I really have to say that. I've gotten cards from the email that sang and danced. People have called me singing. People have... <laughs> it's been quite entertaining. I felt like a Marva King, Marva King, the princess. That's how I felt. So it's it's been great. So you're not late. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, the calendar, which is really outstanding, put together the beautiful Marva King in various uh, uh, outfits and hairstyles, and uh, you know, <laughs> thank you. You can uh, get that at her website, thekittysings.com, and the album yeah. Light a Day at cdbaby.com and thekittysings.com. Got an other instant message. I'll run this by. We talked about this off air, but you know, another listener wanted to know about this. They said, "What happened with Prince during the song Come On' at Jay Leno when Marva did a sound same as a pig sound and Prince started to smile?" They said, <laughs> <laughs> "That's exactly for what they." That was uh, JYT, one of our listeners out there. Instant message okay. us about that. Oh, boy, JYT, you know what, right, we were talking about that when we were off air just a second ago. He said, you made a pig out. I have to go back and refer to that footage, which right. I don't have access to it. I think uh, Joe is going to yeah. make sure we're, I get a copy we're of gonna it. hook you up. Right. <laughs> and I have to see why I did it, but I know, okay, off the top of my head, I know that, you know, he doesn't eat meat. He's a vegetarian. Right. And... Oh my goodness! Who does? It probably had something referring to the vegetarian something. I I don't know. Right. I I, don't, I would have to look at it and see. But when he said that, I was like, I would have oh, hilarious. I think it was something about something ponderosa. So oh, okay. I think you mentioned something like that, ponderosa, <laughs> and you said oink oink. That that's that's what I'm hearing. But you'll be. I mean, you'll be able to let us know in a future interview okay. about that. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Well, you know what? We did so many things unrehearsed in that, you know, he was very, very sporadic and, and spontaneous. He may just say or do anything. I mean, we rehearse our songs to make sure we know our lyrics and all that and our cutoffs and all that. But in between there, oh, my goodness, from start to finish, I don't know what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. And whatever he does, I respond to it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, all talented people <laughs> together. So, you know, your own your own music, putting a band together, uh, to do some touring. Um, yeah. Do you have some people in mind, or do you have a band to all put together? Right well, you now? know what? I have I, I have a band, or I should say have had a band. <laughs> okay. Have had, um, which is improper English, has had, I know, but I'm saying I have a band, meaning I still have people available. Right. But I'm getting ready to actually bring in some other musicians that are incredible. Um, <laughs> so, so what kind we've had of, a ball. Uh, what kind of band do you, do you look to put together, like, instrument-wise? Well, it's going to be instrumentation-wise? Yeah. Well, there's going to be um, the same, you know, same setup, and being that we'll have drummer, live drummer, um, bass player um, that also plays synthesized bass, which is not what I had before. I just had a live bass player with, you know, the acoustic bass. Okay. Uh, or electric bass, right, I'm sorry. And uh, guitar player, um, I'll have two keyboard players instead of one this time because there's a lot of electronics being that I'm doing my own music. Of course, I want to duplicate as close as possible to what they're hearing on the record. I I, I do believe in that. Um, And uh, I'll have some horn players and uh, maybe a percussion player right now. I don't think I'm hiring one right now, but I'm definitely... Uh, looking for people. I got the two keyboard players. I do have the drummer. I got an incredible drummer. Um, but my bass player and my uh, guitar player, I'm looking for those two mu- musicians right now. And then we're fine. I got singers. I'm, I'm always looking for more singers. Uh, I'm like Prince with that. I'm always looking for great people because you never know. Somebody may have a solo career in the future. 
So um, I'm always looking for lovely young ladies that, you know, can really, really sing and can dance a little bit, too, because I'm from that school, print school. You got to dance, too. You got to dance and sing and all of it. So, uh, yeah, so that's where I am right now. And I'm about to uh, actually see I've been going out now with dancers. I have five dancers, beautiful ladies and one guy who's the uh, choreographer. And uh, we've been doing our promotional tours like that live to track. Mm -hmm. That's fun, but you know I'm from the Midwest. Yeah, I gotta have some. <laughs> I gotta have it's gotta some live musicians. Deal. Yeah, and then we're gonna start doing concerts. You know, uh -huh. I just signed a few contracts to do some uh, live concerts, so I have to get prepared for that anyway. So I'll incorporate the dancers when I can, and then you know once Marvin King blow up and light a day, just like all over the charts and stuff, That's and right. we get bigger budgets, <laughs> then we'll have dancers and the band, and that'll be a great thing because. Uh, I can't wait for that to happen. Right. It'd be sight to see, but yeah. So that's yeah. that's what I'm doing right now in the interim of that now. And, and it's an outstanding record. Uh, highly recommended here that uh, our listeners go to uh, thekittysings.com and also cdbaby.com. Marva King, Light a Day, and uh, you know she's been our special guest for the past uh, 40 minutes or so, and we're gonna uh, play one more track and also. If you just tuned in, we'll be re-airing this interview in a couple weeks at our website, upperroomwithjoekelly.com. That'll be up there for three, four uh, days and nights, and people get a chance to hear about six times a day. So Yay. we'll have a direct link to your website. And, you know, those that didn't pick up the copy before that can pick it up again. So, yeah. I, w I want to yeah, thank you well, for that's spending, wonderful. spending all this time this afternoon. And I, I know you're busy, so... You know, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been getting the phone that if you heard any beeps, I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> oh, they just ring. <laughs> Actually, I, I didn't. I didn't hear a thing, and you know the signal was oh, clear and everything. So uh, great, great. That's great. <laughs> let's see, okay. We're gonna, well, yeah, we're gonna uh, listen to Honey tonight. This is a real funk song. We're funksters here. So. <laughs> okay. And, uh, All right. Very good. Yeah. Thanks so much, Marvin. Thanks no, thank thanks. you. Thank you for having me here. And thanks for all of you that are listening. And for those that made purchase or inquiries or even sent you quick messages, thank you so much. Yeah. And another one said, uh, they, uh, they're just typing as we speak. Uh, okay. They said, you're a beautiful lady and like your style. So. Oh, yeah. thank you. Hey, you're doing things right. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, boy. Right. I'm praying every day to do it right, you know? Right, right. <laughs> So thanks, okay. Marvin. And just hold on a second. I want to I talk sure, to you for Joe. one second. Okay, this is Marvin King. 